Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're back here in Space Engineers. We're going to expand on our comments on design evolution. Uh, this particular branch of ships here has been made in the last six days, basically. Each iteration has come up with uh, either slight or significant changes as we've gone along. And basically, uh, what we end up seeing a lot on a lot of the forums is uh, you just talking about how you come up with a good ship design. And of course, there's different ways to do that. Uh, my personal favorite is to just come up with whatever design concept you like to begin with. Say, for example, if you want to build a carrier, the first thing you need to decide on is if it's going to be more of a traditional style carrier, or if you're going to have like uh, launch tubes like in Battlestar Galactica and other such programs. And of course, start from there. You start with your core thing. Say you'll have like your flight deck, and then you'll have your hangars to build off of that. And then of course, after that, I recommend going onto your necessary structural parts, such as your power, your storage and everything else and so on and doing the whole last of course if your hole is your base design obviously you want to start with that first and then just integrate the parts into it basically just start out with what you have as a concept to begin with and what we're touching on is of course our dropship series here that we've been working on as I said this week for the last six days uh, each iterations had a variance of changes some of them rather significant overall major changes and then some of them very minor so let's take a look here our first one which is the very base model rather ugly it, it it's didn't line up too well honestly i kind of had oversight as you can see there that huge gap between the uh, front and the back sections there uh, the general concept we came up with this was basically uh, similar to the valkyrie from planet side 2 it's a t-bar thruster build that has Drop, drop seats on the side for moving you know, personnel around. That's the whole concept for it here. Now this one, and the first, and the second one rather, they were designed prior to atmospheric thrusters being introduced in the game, so they were based off of ion thrusters with hydrogen thrusters on the uh, wings here. Now we did use mods on, the, on these original two models here. It used a mod that basically made a copy of all the parts for a large ship but for a small frame also gave us small landing gear and of course it also gave us a uh, mod for armored thrusters as you can see different ion thrusters they're all sloped armored thrusters which is one of the more popular mods in the series or in the game rather all right so basically what you do here is you would unlock your landing gear rotate it lock it into place. Now the reason you have to lock it is because you can't really, well, you can if you put enough weight in the overall design, get a thruster mounted on the other end of a rotor to work without dragging you odd, oddly, but uh, basically you'll, you're you going to have some drag if you don't lock it in place, and the landing gear works the same as a merge block or a connector in that regard, so it lets you operate it without having to worry about the drag. And of course, once that's locked into place, you would activate your thrusters. Of course, we're actually mag-locked here with the landing gear to the pads. We're not going to take off. But basically, the idea is that you would be able to use those engines for vertical and forward lift. Now, of course, this design is no longer relevant because you can't really get enough thrust from the ion thrusters in atmosphere to use it. And of course, you wouldn't really want to use a open canopy, or open seat rather, passenger design on a ship that's just designed to go between capital ships and stations. So it, it became pretty much obsolete, but we had already moved on, again prior to atmosphere thrusters being out, to the Mark II, which what we did here is uh, we first decided the profile was a bit too large, so we wanted to uh, make it a little bit smaller. We dropped the T-bar down with a total of two blocks, and basically just walled in the seating area a bit more. We added more thrust to it. Now both of these have a overhead connector for resupply. There is a hydrogen fuel tank in there and some storage as well and a large reactor in each of these. And of course a couple of batteries for power retention. Now the idea between the connector on the top was basically you would have like a crane system in your ship or station that would come down, grab onto it, lift it up and carry it over to a storage area where it'd sit down tightly packed with a bunch of other other craft. And of course you'd just move it out onto the flight deck that way. 
Now, uh, pretty much the design overall stayed the same. We got a lot more thrust out of it. We added these two large sloped armored thrusters in the back. And we doubled our hydrogen thrusters. As you can see, the armor casing was pretty much the same for the thrusters. We just modified it. We'll go back and look at that one real quick. Basically, we've just coated the uh, hydrogen thruster and the connector it's connected to with a thin layer of armor. And, of course, the operation for this is very much the same. You would rotate, and it would thrust. Now, this one, obviously, it moves much faster. We can double the thrust just on the oscillating thrusters alone, let alone the extra thrusters on the body. Go ahead and turn that off. All right, and then, of course, the uh, other variant of it basically just added guns up to the top section. We added uh, piping through with conveyors to keep those loaded. As, as you'll notice, these were actually unarmed. Right. Then after that, planets actually came out and they gave us atmospheric thrusters. So we went on to the uh, Mark III design. Which, what we did here is, again, we reduced the profile. We had issues, since being on a planet, it's hard to actually get up on a ramp, so you had to make a ramp to get to your cockpit. We had to lower your cockpit down, so what we did is we cut out a section there and recessed our landing gear. Of course, this is using default one. Those are actually using a small landing gear mod. Now, everything from the Mark III onward is completely built with vanilla parts. No mods used. So, here we have, we uh, expanded the number of batteries in there. We had the solar panels, we had the seats on the side, of course, so we just moved them forward. And we reduced the number of guns off of the second variant of the Mark II. Just to a functional well, two guns. And, of course, so we had our antenna moved forward. Now, the wing did turn out to be a bit long. Again, what we started with with this design is we started with the T-bar section, but we also knew from testing other designs that we would have to use an armor spine like this, a heavy armor spine, to keep the ship together if it took any hits because of the way damage is working now. Basically, if it was all light armor, you would end up, say, hitting one of these engines on a tree, and the whole wing would probably snap off. But with the heavy armor, it typically only takes an engine, maybe two engines off, and that's actually still enough for this craft to fly. Uh, played around with everything from the Mark III and onward on atmosphere, and it's it's done pretty good as far as being able to pick itself back up and continue. Now, of course, with the atmospheric thrusters, they're all over the place to give us all the different directions. We did not add any descending thrusters here, relying solely on gravity. And, of course, the tail section, as you see, we made that a bit smaller as well. Uh, on the previous ones, it was a bit oversized. It looks nice enough, it's just it's extra weight and you don't really need that much. Honestly, we don't need it this long either. We could cut the whole tail section off and probably just have more thrusters there and it would work out much better, but for aesthetic reasons, I like having the tail section on there. Now, we did move the connector down to the bottom and that actually works out perfectly with the landing gear because they're pretty much on the same level. And I've tried a number of different things uh, as far as landing. Of course, doing a soft landing where you just line it up and the connector works fine. But also, you can come in sort of a uh, skidding landing, like you were landing on a deck. As long as the surface isn't pitted, then you'll be perfectly fine. There is a bit of a problem with this design on pitted surfaces that are very rough. That you might end up getting nicked on one of the landing gear. Or worse yet, if you have a large enough knoll it'll nick the front of the nose, and that'll either damage it or even send the thing cartwheeling. So you gotta be careful with those heavy landings. If you're coming in on a heavy landing on anything from the Mark III and on, which are the only ones that are actually up on the workshop, you want to make that last second where you're pulling up, getting your nose up, angled, and then come in basically sliding in on the tail end. Of course, uh, ideally you're not going to be landing that hard. Now, next, we went on to our Mark IV. And all that basically did was we increased the number of engines, we reduced the wing profile, added a missile launcher under the nose, moved the uh, spotlights up to the top, and reduced the solar panel by one to make up for the smaller profile. Uh, this one actually ended up 
No, actually, this one does have the same number of batteries as the Mark III. It was the later versions of the Mark IV that we increased the battery size on. But basically, it has the same flight characteristics, a bit better stopping power, since we've doubled the number of thrusters for reverse, and of course, your forward thrusters are also doubled as well. So, stop and go is a lot easier with the Mark IV. And smaller profile, it actually comes in fairly close to the same weight, interestingly enough, once we've reduced those wing profiles. So, it's a pretty good design. It's worked out well for us, is what we've been using the most. Uh, we have our other variants for it. Of course, the uh, 4B is our gunship variant, which is nothing but guns instead of seats. Uh, nothing else has changed on that. We move on to the 4C which uses guns here, and we actually went back and added a single seat on either end afterwards. It turned out, basically, that we didn't need to recess the guns as far back as we did on the uh, B variant. So we moved those forward and put the extra seat back in. And, of course, it's got a nice armor profile on it as well. Then next, we went on to the uh, D variant here, which goes with a slightly different change. We took off the headlights, or not the headlights, sorry, but the spotlights on the top. We've increased the number of guns from the default Mark IV-A variant. And we've retained the number of seats and also increased the number of batteries. So it's got a longer lifespan. It's a little bit heavier, but it basically fills all the roles there. It's both a gunship and a transport. And of course, moving on here to the E, which is our latest variant of it. It's basically the same thing as the D, just we've taken off of the atmospheric thrusters and the wings. And we've added these orbital thruster pods, I guess you could say. Basically, it's got the two hydrogen thrusters for vertical and forward lift. And then it's got one ion thruster in each direction on each pod. And what we've been playing with that is basically taking off from the surface, flying up in the atmosphere. And, of course, going back down. And so far, it's been perfectly fine. And it actually has a hydrogen tank in there as well. Oh, I did miss something here on the D. I did forget to mention that. I believe it is the D here. Let me double check. Ah, here on a connector. Right. So the D, we'll take that off. You'll see we put a large cargo container there. Now... Let me go ahead and skip quickly over here. After we got through the C variant, we decided to take a break from that and do a smaller craft here. So we took the same general design and we did a scout. Now originally this had the uh, rotor controlled thrusters, just as we had on the first two variants of the dropship. And you'll see that in my rotor tutorial we put up earlier. It was yesterday we put that up. And, of course, we took that off and went with a fixed wing concept here. Uh, the original version only had the uh, wing thrusters on it. And it flies perfectly fine. You can actually fly with just one plane of thrust in the atmosphere. It's a very light scout. It has a good battery of life with two batteries on it. Of course, we added the extra thrusters and a little bit of armor around the gun. Since there's two guns, one on each side. And, of course, you can see an ore detector in here and a antenna on the back. Basically, this is what you would use as a scout unit to go out, find your ores, and basically relay that back to your work site, your, your, your base, rather, and they would, of course, fly out the work crews on the dropships and whatever other equipment they need. Now, with this, you see it has a connector on the bottom of it as well for recharging and resupplying. But with this here... Since it's got the large cargo container, it's directly wired into the connector. So what we'll be adding later on is we'll be doing various work craft, or work vehicles rather, we're going to try to do a mining buggy. And of course a mobile tower that a buggy or mining craft could connect to, to unload and then load up into this dropship here. Basically serve as kind of like a carry-all to actually move resources and personnel to and from a dig site. Now, of course, after we did the scout, we moved on to an actual, well, carry-all. This is basically just designed on the concept of using two T-bar thrusters. And inside there is four large cargo containers. 
and it just got thrusters all the way around, heavily armored. This one we only did one iteration of so far. We will, of course, be revisiting it. As you can see, what we started out with was basically doing the cargo on the inside the armored hull and then putting the T-bar thrusters on, which looks fine. The rear looks a bit odd, but not too bad because it's kind of hard to taper a cylinder with the blocks that are available in game unless you want to go fully round. Especially when you have a connector on the back and on the bottom because this is designed to be able to land to actually load up from either direction. And of course the front is the worst but honestly it's really rather ugly and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I wanted to stick with the default cockpit because it looks more construction-ish rather than the dropships which needed to be a bit more sleek but we might end up changing it over to the fighter cockpit to make this look a bit better. But there's still a lot of work there to do. Uh, the main body is solid. This thing will hover on its own. It's got plenty of battery power. It can go for quite some time. I believe it's got enough battery to last fully operational for almost an hour, I believe it was. All right, so after that, we came up with this design. That's when we went over and decided to try to spit one of the cargo containers into a previous dropship design. So we started with the larger one here. And of course, then we went on to the C and D, or sorry, the uh, D and E. E variants that we went over previously. Now, this we kind of stopped pretty much midway through. It looked kind of tacky once we added on the large cargo container, and I realized with it that way, all I had to do was move the connector back, move the landing gear forward, put the cargo container right here, move the batteries forward, and I would be able to make it look much better as we did in our later variants over here. See, it looks a lot more smooth that way. And the reason we're going over all this is basically to give you guys an idea of how designs will evolve and change in each iteration. And you shouldn't be too concerned if your first design looks completely shit like this. Oh, sorry, bad language. Alright, looks completely horrible <laughs> like this and just doesn't measure up because your next one you'll probably do a good bit better and then of course as you go down the line you'll get really good at it and it doesn't have to be a long period of time or a lot of work you put into it it's just attacking the same situation from different angles so we come up with all these different results and even the uh, last one here our e mark actually has a cargo container in it as well or sorry no it's a hydrogen container in this one I forgot that it needed a hydrogen tank, so we didn't put a large cargo container. Alright, so basically that's purely just for transport and personnel. That is our next step, is to make a variant that can go from surface to orbit and orbit to surface fine while carrying cargo. And that is where we're going to have to decide if we're going to stick with our dropship variant or if we're going to have to work more on our carry-all to make that happen since the carry-all design is actually going to have the size to transport that up without getting well, a complete rehaul on the design. Alright, uh, well, hope that was helpful and inspirational for you guys there. We'll keep working on our series and let you know what we come up with, of course. Uh, if you've got any kind of craft that you're working on or any trouble coming up with ways to approach your own designs, let us know. we will be able to give you a hand or at least some tips on it, rather. And of course, as always, have a good day.